News 46 is brought to you by... Southwest Medical Associates. Look for news about their latest healthcare center opening soon in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. News 46 is also brought to you by Red Apple Fireworks. You've never seen anything like it. Nevada's elite fireworks shopping experience. Red Apple Fireworks. News 46 is also brought to you by Safi of Las Vegas. At Safi, we're more than a foster care and adoption agency. We're working to build stronger families in our communities. Visit our website at safi.org. Tonight on News 46, a final goodbye at Mount Charleston Elementary and a three-vehicle accident at Prump Valley Boulevard and Highway 372. And the community reaches out to tornado victims. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell and News Across Nevada with Janet Eric. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Thursday, June 9th, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. Topping our news tonight, a three-vehicle accident occurred this afternoon on Pahrump Valley Boulevard and Highway 372, resulting in one injury. We are here on Pahrump Valley and Highway 372, where this afternoon there was a three-vehicle accident. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue arrived on scene along with Nye County Sheriff's deputies. Nye County Sheriff's auxiliary blocked traffic while the investigation was underway. One person was transported locally here. Nye County Sheriff's will investigate the cause of this accident. This is Deanna O'Donnell on Pahrump Valley and 372 for News 46. Well, school's out and students all over Nye County went home for the summer today. Mance Elementary is closing and reopening with a new facility on the north side of town in the fall. And one local school, Mount Charleston, is closing its doors permanently. This is due to budget cuts. They shared a very tearful farewell this afternoon. The staff and students had their mat last math class, their last recess, and their last goodbye. Our luau, but it, it's, it has a little bit more significance obviously this year with the closing of the school. So a sad time for a lot of kids, a lot of staff and, and parents too. So had a good time, dunk tank and a lot of different events and uh, everybody enjoyed it, but it is a sad time. There was a lot of teary eyes out there. I know normally you guys walk around the circle, you just have the fifth graders rock, walk around today all the students. Yeah, it, we call it the Green Mile um, since we're uh, green and white and fifth grade usually does it but since we're closing we had fifth grade start and then we went around and picked up uh, kindergarten first, second, third, fourth so everybody could say goodbye one final time and uh, give parents and students and staff a chance for high fives and hugs and, and tears were, were shed so um, tough time but you know we're, we're moving on. People fought very valiantly to save this school to keep it open and uh, the kids are going to now be rezoned, relocated to other schools. How are they adjusting? You know what? Uh, last year we talked about it, and it was very tough. And luckily, they kept us open because it was a, it was sudden. Uh, this year, we it was kind of planned for a lot of staff, and and we kind of figured with the budget cuts and the way the economy is, um, when the students heard about it, they were sad. Um, but we told them, you know, you're you're going to go to another school, and you're going to see a lot of the same kids and a lot of the same teachers. And most of our students went to to Floyd and JG, and then we have a um, fewer numbers going to Hafen and Mance, but um, they adjusted well, but you know, it's still a sad time. This has been a family for a long time, and a lot of the kids have gone here since kindergarten, and um, they've enjoyed the time, and it's been a great time. So um, we're fortunate, and unfortunately it's closing, but you know, the kids are gonna do well. We, we've set a good foundation for them to go to other schools, so they'll be fine. Do they get to visit the other schools um, before this closed? No, no, they didn't. Um, it, uh, the fifth graders go to a Rosemary Clark Middle School for a transition trip, but as far as the other uh, kids visiting schools, there is a lot of transiency, so some of them have been to every school, um, unfortunately, with the way the economy is, but um, they'll, it'll be a new experience for a lot of them. And I know that uh, your slogan for this was uh, 
going out with a roar. Uh, we are going out with a roar. We're the Cougars, so we went out with a roar. We came up with this uh, slogan on the shirts. So we gave one. Uh, we actually won the E-rate survey contest. Uh, we had the the quickest turn in at uh, I think it was 75 percent. So our parents and students really got on that, and we got two thousand dollars with that. And we spent all that money on the students. So we got them all T-shirts and wanted them to have the Cougar pride to end the year. And a lot of them still have those shirts, and they'll hang them up hopefully, and and just remember the time they had here. How is the staff doing? Where are they going? And yourself? Um, I'm actually going to be the principal at Rosemary Clark Middle School next year. I'm very excited about that. It, it's going to be a, a big challenge for me. Um, I'm excited about the challenge. I think uh, I'll be able to handle that just fine. I have a great staff out there. I'm setting up more staff and um, some people are moving to other states for a job. Um, but, you know, we, we're filling in. We're worried about the budget cuts that are coming. So we'll see how that goes. Um, my other staff, that, uh, the staff that was here is pretty veteran. So with the, the contractual language, a lot of those people got jobs in other schools. Um, quite a few went to Floyd Elementary School. A lot uh, went to Mance, uh, a couple to JG and, and um I'm not sure anybody went to Haven though. So um, over a, a couple of staff went to Haven, but um, most of them went to Floyd and, and Mance and, um, you know, proximity for where their houses are with the gas prices too, but also a lot of them wanted to stay together um, due to being like a family. So they like working with each other. So You guys do this uh, uh, thing every time that uh, school ends and that was uh, standing at the end of the um, line of the school buses and singing um, to Tell them. You goodbye. <laughs> um, we, we made that tradition a couple years ago, and tell you, I'm, I'm going to miss this family, and it is a family. Both of my boys attended that school. And now it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> That's so sad. And, well, one of them's graduating today. That's right. Chad. And tomorrow. Well, tomorrow. Yeah. That's right. I'm already on Friday. <laughs> I'm stressed. All right. Well, the Nevada Sheriff's and Chiefs Association members voted to recognize the carry concealed weapon permits of 15 states as being valid in Nevada. Effective July 1st, the states are Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Michigan, Missouri, Nebraska, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, Rhode Island, Tennessee, and West Virginia. Virginia. In a partridge on a pear tree. <laughs> in a pear tree. <sighs> anyway, all right, the list of qualifying states will be posted on the Nevada Department of Public Safety website. So my only question is, did they forget a state maybe, you think? I don't know. I, <laughs> I may have though. They almost got them all. <laughs> Folks, coming up after the break, local residents reach out to help the victims of the Joplin tornado. And a celebrity auction was held to benefit No to Abuse. We'll have all this and more right after the break. Please keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by... Southwest Medical Associates. Look for news about their latest healthcare center opening soon in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates, now that's powerful medicine. News 46 is also brought to you by Red Apple Fireworks. You've never seen anything like it. Nevada's elite fireworks shopping experience, Red Apple Fireworks. News 46 is also brought to you by Safi of Las Vegas. At Safi, we're more than a foster care and adoption agency. We're working to build stronger families in our communities. Visit our website at safi.org. Welcome back to News 46. The tornado that ravaged Joplin, Missouri affected not only their residents, but locals here in town. So much so that they felt compelled to reach out however they can. Doing as we are collecting uh, humanitarian aid for the citizens of Joplin that have been so tremendously uh, devastated by these tornadoes. Uh, we're excited to be able to do this and uh, it's amazing what we've seen. He's had an incredible turnout. We have uh, a very giving community. And so it's our, our prayer that we'll be able to fill up the, the trailer over the next three weeks and then in July uh, be able to take four guys and to transport this to Joplin, at which time they will distribute it and we'll be able to 
help in any kind of construction endeavors they'd have us to be involved in as well. Speaking of construction, somebody donated a $200 toolkit inside the trailer. That was really generous. It was very generous, and that's what they need. They need new items. They need everything from leaf rakes to toilet paper to baby wipes to, to uh, socks, uh, underwear, everything. It, the devastation is vast. And if you go to the website, you'll be able to, to see uh, from there, from a link, what it is that they're encountering. And it's, it's a tremendous opportunity for the people in this little town of Pahrump to display their, their sensitivity and, and love for some fellow brothers and sisters on the other side of the country. Calvary Chapel is doing this. What compelled you guys, besides this, the devastation, to reach out so far away to, yes. to these people? No, you know, Dan, with all that's gone on from Haiti to what took place in Japan, certainly with the flooding that's taking place, it's time that the body of Christ understood what it means to function as a body. And we're thrilled. Calvary Chapel, Pahrump Valley, Pastor John Gundacker uh, is sending out two teams every week throughout this month. Uh, to go and, and help with the needs and we're kind of accumulating these goods and and we hope to go back in Mike at Valley Signs gave us a free banner for this and this is a cool little town and sometimes you don't see the All the the love that that's so evident in this town until there's a need like this that kind of motivates everyone It really is um, something that uh, you're not seeing So many people pay attention to right now, but really needs a lot of attention paid to it S uh, quick swift action is important certainly and and to hit it as you said right right while the iron's hot and and it's not just so much that the swift action but I mean I, we've all been in situations where where God forbid you found yourself in an emergency room at a hospital you need help right then you need encouragement right then and you need to know that you're not by yourself and so uh, Calvary Chapel La Habra in, in Southern California has already sent a 50-foot truck filled with everything and uh, and so it's something that churches all over the country really are, are, are rallying to be able to you know to put their hands to the plow and to help out. If people missed the donations today how can they donate through Calvary Chapel? Thank you yes uh, well we're gonna be here we plan to be here uh, the next uh, we will be here tomorrow uh, Sunday uh, from 12 until 7 uh, and then we will be running the weekends throughout the month of June. Kay Smart Floyd, Nye County Senior Dispatch Supervisor, ended a year-long battle with cancer and passed away peacefully in her home on Saturday, May 28th. Kay was 66 years old and had lived in Pahrump for over 40 years. Kay served the Sheriff's Office for over 26 years. Also giving to our community, Kay volunteered for over 30 years with the Nye County Search and Rescue, the Ambulance Service as a volunteer EMT, the Harvest Festival Committee, and on the, on the 911 Advisory Board. Funeral services set for this Saturday, June 11th at 11 a.m. at the First Southern Baptist Church on 741 Fairs Way. The family asked in lieu of flowers, donations be made to either Nathan Adelson Hospice or the American Cancer Society in Kay's name. And filmmaker Dayon Paul speaks to us about his courageous crustaceans film. Crustaceans? What category is this in? This is an animation. Can you tell me a little bit about it. Well, it's about these two prehistoric shellfish, a crab and a lobster, in a, an underwater arms race. And it's sort of a, the prehistoric version of Looney Tunes. Wow. That's fantastic. How's it been doing at um, film festivals? Uh, well, it's been at about a half dozen film festivals so far and, and counting, so it's been done extremely well, actually. Yeah. Some previous projects? Uh, well, some, uh, the last film I did, I think, before this was Dinosaur in Hollywood. Um, I've done a few other scattered shorts and worked on a few films. Um, and, uh, you know, we ha we're planning another one, too, another short after this. Are they on animation? Uh, most of them, yeah. Most of them are animation. Yeah. And so, uh, future projects, what are you working on in the future? Do you know yet? Uh, well, we're working on another version of the, the same series that Courageous Station's in. It's called uh, Primordial Soup, a whole series of these prehistoric animations. And, uh, and then we have another film coming up, which just won a, the script, just won an award at Honolulu Film Awards, and we're going to be doing a live action called Hogwilds. Where are you from? From Reno. So you're local out here. Um, 
uh, tell me about uh, how people can get in touch with your films, past projects, and future. Uh, well, they can look stuff up on YouTube and stuff, and we, we also have a website, um, and that's we post pretty much everything on the website. What's the website? It's uh, Antipode Media, A N T I P O D E Media, M E D I A dot com. And lots of fun and surprises for a good cause. The Nye County Celebrity Auction to Benefit No to Abuse was held at the Pahrump Nugget Saturday night. Really excited. This is our annual auction, and this year the proceeds will go to the Ch Children's Advocacy Center, which is a new program of No to Abuse. It's a program that uh, is being uh, developed and implemented in conjunction with uh, Brian Kunze, the district attorney, uh, the sheriff's office, and child protective services. And what we do is we take children who have been sexually molested or severely abused and we uh, begin the healing process with them by conducting a forensic interview. That's an interview to collect evidence about who the perpetrator is and a medical exam right on the premises rather than the children having to go to Las Vegas or Reno. Um, we're extremely excited. We have uh, children's workshops. We have therapy groups for parents of uh, abused children. And we are really, really proud that this community has come together for abused children. Last year, there were over 199 sexually and severely abused children in Pahrump. And we are just delighted that the sheriff and the district attorney and Child Protective Services and No to Abuse can work together to help these children and their families heal as quickly as possible. That's a, that's a shocking number, uh, even 199 in our small community. Is there any prevention programs or information on, on, uh, on even signs to see for parents or for children? I think that awareness is something we really need to work on as a community and certainly all the providers uh, who are involved with the Children's Advocacy Center need to help the adults, the teachers, the parents in the community understand the signs of sexual abuse uh, in, ch in children. Frequently parents or teachers think they're just being angry, they're acting out, they're being naughty but in fact they may be being abused and the symptoms may be what they're trying to tell us but through behavior not through words. Have you ever been to one of those events? No I haven't had the luxury. It's a, <laughs> it's a lot of fun because you walk down and you're being auctioned off for lunch you know and um, you know people kind of go crazy. I only saw one celebrity though yeah. um, you know the town manager because he's on TV all the time. That's right. And I saw some politicians and yeah. I saw a bank manager but I mean you're like the number one celebrity in town. Oh, you and Deanna. Oh I don't know about that. Well I'm volunteering <laughs> you for next year. <laughs> okay fair enough all right. All right. I'll, I'll we should have that. some television celebrities right <laughs> i'd right. be more than willing to they're willing they're it's willing to have me very good cause okay so hey it was warm today it tell was. me about the weather <laughs> all right i'll tell you about the weather that 90 degree weather we've had today that's staying all week mm. long we're gonna have 90 degree weather all week long and that really nice low wind we've had today almost no wind yeah that's gone too we got tons of wind coming right back in the oh, seven no. day forecast don't go anywhere because i'll have that for you right after the break Forty six weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at NevadaDairyCouncil.org. Hey everyone, welcome back to News 46. I'm Rick Vale with your weather. Today we had a very sunny day out there, high of 92, with winds out of the southwest at 9 miles per hour. Our pressure on the barometer held steady with 29.94. UV index was 9, very high today, as seems to be the case for most of the summer out here. Sunrise at 5.26 a.m. and our record is 111 degrees in 1985. Looking at tonight, it's going to be clear for us with yet again slow winds north-northeast at about 9 miles per hour. An overnight low of 68 is expected. Since it'll be right at 8 o'clock on the dot, record low was 50 degrees in 1950. Checking out our seven day forecast tomorrow, looking at again, not very much in the way of wind. We're going to get a little lucky there. So those graduates, they're going to have a decent one at least. Saturday, 28 mile per hour gusts expected, high 94, low 62. 
Sunday looking at 32 mile per hour gusts, a high of 90 and overnight low of 64. Monday, not much changing in that department, 32 for the wind yet again with a high of 93 and an overnight low of 63. Tuesday, 25 mile per hour gusts with a high of 96 and a low of 67. Wednesday, just getting hotter, 33 for the gusts with a high of 97, a low of 67. And if we make it that far next Thursday, 104 degrees for the daytime high with an overnight low of 75 and gusts upwards of 32 miles per hour. Today's worst weather in the nation today, Woodstock, Illinois, for damaging thunderstorms. And they sure look like they're from Woodstock. That's now, right. They're, you know, <laughs> free love. Yes. Well, I'm glad graduation won't be too windy. You said it's going to be a little bit yeah, windy. Yeah, a little bit windy. Not, it's going to be under 20 miles per hour, but still probably pretty darn close to that. So. Okay, very well. Yeah. And the Bureau of Land Management invites the public to the third annual open house tonight from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at the Pahrump Nugget. And folks, to order your Pahrump Valley High School graduation ceremony DVDs, you're going to want to call us right here at 727-9400, extension 209. And to donate food to the Pahrump Valley High School graduation night party, which is tomorrow night, call Lisa Holloman at 209-3282. Now apparently they do need food. They're asking imagine. for it. So <laughs> that senior night is a pretty big deal. I chaperoned last year. There was plenty of food. The kids dance and they're safe. So if you can donate food, make sure you give Lisa Holloman a call at 209 3282. Now, if you're coming to the graduation, they're asking that you please carpool. They're short on parking because they have construction going on for part of the new high school. Yeah. So please carpool. Don't bring signs. Don't bring flowers. Leave all that for afterwards when you when you head home for reception and then you head to the senior grad night after that. Where's grad night being held this year? It's going to be at the um, paintball oh, field. Oh, okay. So it's way out there, but most of the kids uh, know where it is, and okay. I think that they were given directions from the high school, but it won't be at Bob Rood this year because, you know, there's we still... We don't have a Bob Rood We right don't now. have a Bob Rood. That's where it normally is, but uh, Lisa always does a really good job, so she's probably going to have it all decked out, and they'll have a lot of, a lot of fun. Awesome. All right, folks. Well, I think that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. From everyone up here on the Hill at KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. And we'll take you to our credits with a little intro from Alice Cooper.